Why should you play a character that is locked behind spending Astrite worth a trillion dollars? You shouldn't. Limited characters? GONE! Why should you play a standard banner character? I mean, they kinda can be free, but I'd have to make an effort and click an extra four times to summon them. UNACCEPTABLE! Standard banner characters? GONE! I need a character that has already been on my account since I started this game. Someone I can trust. We all know who I'm talking about. Yang Yang. Rover. We are playing Rover. But not the boring piss yellow Rover. Get out here! You know what they say. Purple is the new yellow. Today we play the cooler Rover. The one with wings. So how do you play this hard ass bitch? Haha, <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. My name is Aloha and this is my Havoc Rover guy. Havoc Rover is the sole reason I play this game. Look at her. Besides great Twitter art, she also has a fun kit. Her basic attack is a 5 hit combo. After the third attack, you get wings. And the fifth attack is a slam. Her normal heavy attack deals a little more damage and skips the second and third attack of the combo, making it much faster. Her skill just deals Havoc damage twice. Her passive, or forward circuit. Circuit. I'm just gonna call it passive, adds a resource bar above the HP bar, called Umbra. Once it's full, the next heavy attack consumes the bar and empowers her attacks, heavy attacks and skill for a short period of time, dealing more damage. Her ultimate has the biggest damage multiplier in the game and deals a big burst, which blows harder than your mother. Her intro skill just deals havoc damage once. Yeah, that's it. Her outro skill leaves behind a damage over time field. Through level ups, you can get bonus havoc damage and attack stats and two bonus passive skills. At level 50, your empowered state gains havoc damage bonus. At level 80, your basic attack restore extra energy. Since she is the protagonist, you can get the wave bands over time for free, which basically are constellations or eidolons. Here are some short descriptions. Better skill damage. Empowered state resets skill. Empowered state heals on hit. Heavy attack and ult shred havoc res. Stronger basic attack slam. And empowered state gives crit rate. That is a lot of empowered state buffs. Huh. For her weapon, the standard banner sword is the best, but you can easily give her a Commander of Conviction, Lunar Cutter, or if you have nothing else, a rank 5 Tyro Sword. For Echoes, you want to go for a crit rate or rarely crit damage, Dreamless, as it's buffed if used by Havoc Rover. For the full set bonus, you want a Sun Sinking Eclipse. Best reached by using two of these three cost echoes with Havoc Damage bonus, and two of these one cost echoes with Attack percent as main stat. For substats, you want to look for a crit, attack, or any of the damage bonuses, and energy regen. Basic attack and ult damage bonus are objectively the best, but heavy attack and skill damage bonus are decent too. For her team, you want a sub DPS and a support, preferably Danjin or Sanhua for the outro skills, and Verino or Tauchi as support. In the team with Dungeon and Tauchi, you basically run three Havoc characters. Making the most out of Dungeon's Havoc damage buff, the most out of Rover's fourth wave band Havoc Shred, and it's fun to run the OP Dreamless Echo three times. Also, since they all three use the same Havoc damage Echo set, you can farm Echoes for all of them at the same time. If you still can't beat this game with this OP team, it's a skill issue. Me, the absolutely greatest player of all time, would know best. Uh, just don't click on this video here, okay? It kind of goes against my argument and I don't like it, okay? Just don't do it, okay? Don't don't click on it. Just trust me on this one, okay? Just trust me. I've never died in this game, ever!